Hi, I'm Seth Grover. In this video, we're going to set up Malcolm, the network traffic analysis tool suite, on a Linux machine with the help of Docker. So let's get started. This tutorial assumes that you have visited github.com slash idaholab slash Malcolm and downloaded the files associated with the latest release. If you're working from a cloned working copy of the source code instead, the steps you would follow would be almost identical to what you see here. I'm going to navigate into the directory where I've downloaded the release files and run the installation scripts. Now in this case my distribution does not have a uh, an alias for Python because Python 2 is not installed by default. Python 3 is so if I get this no such file or directory error trying to run Python I'm just going to run Python 3 uh, explicitly with the install script and continue from there. I'm going to be asked some questions about uh, packages that I want to install. These are going to be packages that are required to run Docker, which is the infrastructure that, that Malcolm is running within. Um, and so it might take a few minutes to download those files after I've confirmed that. Once Docker is installed, we will install Docker Compose. And uh, Docker Compose, we can retrieve that directly from GitHub, which the installation script will attempt to do. After that, the script is going to ask you um, about various system tweaks for performance. These are things related to the number of file handles and sockets you can have open, the um, swap, uh, the techniques that your system is going to be using for, for swapping and how aggressive that swapping is. If you don't know what these are, then you're probably safe to, to accept the defaults that I've provided for you here. Um, if you are a power user and you've got your own stuff going on and you you know, you know what these individual values are, you're free to choose yes or no as you need. The ones that are particularly important uh, for more than just performance are the ones that have to do with the number of open file handles and the number of open um, maximum socket connections as those, if they're not increased, can cause some issues when we get uh, running Malcolm, if we have a lot of a lot of indexes. Next, we're going to be asked where we would like to extract the runtime files for Malcolm. Uh, if you have cloned a working copy instead of installing from the tarball, like you see in this example, you will skip this step. In this case, I'm going to specify the directory that I want Malcolm to reside in. And uh, that includes the PCAP files that I upload, the indexes that get created from those files. So, you know, you can pick somewhere here that has enough space uh, in, your, in your hard drive to, you know, to allow for that. And now we will proceed to the next part of the installation, which is tuning your specific instance of Malcolm. For most of these questions that this next step of the installation uh, are asking us, the defaults are fine. Uh, I'm not going to go into the minutiae of what each of these are. Um, if they're not self-explanatory from the, the question itself, you can visit the documentation for Malcolm uh, on the GitHub page or at malcolm.fyi, and you can um, read about what these individual configuration options are. Uh, for now, though, I'm just going to go through and mostly accept the defaults. And that being done, now that we've made these system configuration changes and installed Docker, we are going to issue a reboot and wait for the box to come back up. And now that we're back up, uh, I'm going to run Docker Info just to make sure that Docker actually did install correctly, which it looks like it did. And we are going to navigate into the Malcolm directory where I told the install script we wanted to uh, put Malcolm. And now we're going to run docker compose pull. This is going to um, connect to the Docker Hub repositories and pull the images that uh, make up Malcolm itself. This part could take a while depending on your internet connection. Um, so if you need to go stretch your legs, this would be a good point to do it. We are going to set up authentication by running scripts auth setup. This is going to ask us for a username and password, and it's going to generate the self-signed certificates that Malcolm will use for TLS.
So now that all the configuration is finally taken care of, we can start Malcolm by running slash scripts slash start. This will bring up all of the Docker containers that uh, make up Malcolm. And it can take a few minutes for these containers to start up, probably about three to five minutes, depending on your system. So we will wait for that before we start uploading data for analysis. One thing to note here about uh, all of these cryptic debug messages that are being printed out in your terminal. Um, you do not have to leave this window open for Malcolm to run. It will continue to run in the background. So if you like, you can close this terminal. Um, I like to leave it open just so I can see what's going on in the background as I'm uploading files and as they're being processed. But that is completely optional and uh, it's up to you if you want to close it or leave it. Now that we've waited a few minutes for all of the Docker containers to come up, we're going to switch over to a web browser and we're going to navigate to the upload interface so we can upload a PCAP file for processing and, uh, and do some analysis on it. One thing to note, in this example that I recorded for you, I'm using a virtual machine and I'm doing some port forwarding because my local port uh, was in use for something else. I'm putting in a port number as I enter in this URL. You don't have to do that. Generally, if you just do your HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash localhost slash upload, that will work without you specifying the port number explicitly like I'm doing here. So we're going to go ahead and navigate to the upload interface. The first time you open up a web browser to Malcolm, you'll be presented with this potential security risk. Um, in Firefox, it'll look like this. In Chrome, it'll look a little bit different. Uh, basically, what this is saying is Firefox doesn't know if it can trust the certificate that's being used to do encryption for this website. And the reason that Firefox doesn't know that it can trust that certificate is because we just barely generated it a few minutes ago when we ran that auth setup command. Since we're okay trusting this self-signed certificate that we created a few minutes ago, uh, we can click advanced here and go ahead and create an exception to accept that certificate, and then we should be able to continue to the upload screen. Of course, before we proceed, we're required to enter the username and password, which we created a few moments ago, so we'll do that here. And we are presented with the Malcolm capture file and log archive upload. This is the screen where we can upload a PCAP file uh, or a tarball containing some Zeek logs. And we can upload that file into the Malcolm processing pipeline uh, so that we can actually analyze it and, and extract the data out of it. So here I am going to navigate to the PCAP file that I want to process. Selecting that PCAP file adds it to the upload queue, and as I click Start Upload, you'll see that file is uh, uploaded and then disappears from this processing queue. And then as I flip back over to the debug output from the Docker containers, pretty much immediately you'll see log indices exist and the other um, telltale signs that this file is being processed. You'll see that it got picked up and uh, the PCAP file was processed by Zeke here and those files were archived for insertion into the database. Now returning to the web browser, if we remove slash upload from the URI, we will be taken to the Moloch interface uh, where we can start to look at our data. The first thing we want to do uh, for us to be able to look at our data is change our time frame. By default, uh, Moloch is just searching the last hour. In this case, this PCAP file that we uploaded contains data from a, a time earlier than that. And so we are going to navigate to the time picker. I'm going to change it from last hour to all so I can see the entire time range that covers uh, all of the data that I have present from this PCAP file. And there we go. I can see the traffic represented here from the PCAP file that I processed. Uh, I can scroll down and see the various different sessions and the protocols over which they occurred. Uh, I can expand a particular session. And in this case, since I have the PCAP file available, it's able to actually extract and show the payload. As I scroll up and down through this, I can filter on Moloch sessions or Zeek logs, depending on the saved search that I apply with the view button up there next to the search bar. 
I can also look at the data from my PCAP file with the Kibana interface. Uh, to do that, I can go up and remove the path portion of my URL and replace it with Kibana. Uh, and you'll see the Kibana interface start to load. Now, just like with Moloch, we're going to want to change the query time frame. Kibana's default is the last 24 hours. Uh, it doesn't have an all entry like the Moloch time picker did, but we can pick some large time frame that we know covers all of the time that our PCAP was gathered in. Uh, and as we do that, we'll see the query refresh and uh, our data will be represented in the Kibana dashboard here. And of course, if I want to narrow to a particular time range, I can click and drag on one of the date histogram visualizations, and that will zoom my time frame in on, on whatever that time range is that I have selected. So there we go. We have gone from a vanilla Ubuntu Linux installation through the process of installing Malcolm, uh, complete with Docker and all of the configuration that was required. We have imported a PCAP file and we can see the data here in uh, both Moloch and Kibana. Um, of course, there's a lot more to learn as far as actually doing the analysis and understanding what all of the protocols and all of those different things mean. But uh, hopefully this got you off to a good start and you can start playing around with some of your data and, uh, and seeing what's going on in your network. Thanks for watching.